Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for the introduction, David. Greatly appreciate it. Um, as David said, this time last year, I, I actually was here as well to, to open the conference for him for last year as well. And as he said, we were absolutely overjoyed and I suppose uh, really enthused by the huge crowds that turned up last year to support this absolutely community-focused, patient-focused initiative that's growing across the country. Um, and I have to say, I am absolutely honoured and, and I was delighted to be here today and I'm looking down at a, an even bigger crowd which uh, says to me that we're doing something right and it's great to see it. Again, I suppose on the behalf of the HSE and the National Ambulance Service, we are continuously indebted to community first responder schemes uh, of every type and we are committed, as I said last year, to assisting and working together going forward into 2015 to building a very sustainable model that will improve the outcome to patients across this country in both urban, rural, minor urban, minor rural, whatever term you want to use, uh, and we're here committed to do so. So first and foremost, I'd like to say thanks very much for having us here. Thanks very much for offering or inviting me to come this morning, and delighted that everyone's here bright and early on a Saturday morning. Um, I suppose since the last day we were here, um, the National Ambulance Service, as you probably know, is going through a, a major reconfiguration program. Some of the barriers that we were having in relation to, to absolute commitment to community first responder schemes would be associated around communications uh, and integration of services into our systems. Um, what we're doing at the moment uh, is we are nearly finished our control room configuration. Since last year, uh, we have reduced it now to actual four operating control centres now in Ireland uh, from nine. Two of the four will be remaining in situ, that's in Talla and in Ballyshannon. And the other two remaining ones at the moment is Tullamore here and it'll be Wexford and they will be centralising into uh, Tala uh, inside this year. So that will give us a singular, what we would call a singular CAD communications system across the two sites. We'll be fully digitally, digital interface as well, which will give us seamless delivery of service anywhere in the country at any, at any time. It also allows to, to be able to use the vehicles and staff of every type in a very efficient manner because every resource that's on duty in the country is seen in both locations at all times on a screen which gives us a much better chance to be able to get to a patient faster. Uh, I suppose on top of that as well, we've introduced, uh, and I think they're out there on display if anyone wants to look at it, we've introduced a managed defibrillation system through a company. Uh, we're using Lightpack 15s across all the vehicles now. We've purchased 180 odd of them so far last, between last year and going into this year, and they'll be put across all the vehicles. We've introduced mechanical CPR devices in the back of the response vehicles for single responders and, and solo responders. There, I think there's, a, there's one of them out there on display as well. Please free to go out and have a look at it and see what you think. Um, I suppose also too, we were committed to, we, as you know, we operate a helicopter service through the Department of Defence, operating out of at loan. We call it Medivac 112, it's dear to our heart. Um, and we're continuing to operate that and will continue to do so. That's, there is a, a ministerial decision due to come out on, on the future of that in the next couple of months. Uh, and hopefully it'll be very positive for everyone. Again, the, the, the advantage of the helicopter, particularly in the rural areas, is when we're talking about time and time being of the essence, um, the distance travel from the scene to a receiving hospital, uh, time-wise, is greatly reduced once you're, you're using the heli, which can negate uh, some of the elongated response times we have in the rural parts of the country, which people don't actually factor into the conversation when we're having it with them. So we've had some great successes with that helicopter. Um, <clears throat> it also has uh, worked extremely well in the complete chain from the control centre with community first responder schemes, with paramedics and advanced paramedics, and we've had some very, very positive outcome for patients with that whole chain working hand in hand. Um, I suppose also another thing we did, we're doing, we did this year, which we were delighted to be involved in, was, was the uh, launch of CFR Ireland. Um, we were very heavily involved with that, and we were delighted to be in, to ask to be part of that. For us, it gives us a centre point of contact, hopefully going forward, which allows us to be much more streamlined in the way we can deal with people and much more efficiently and effectively getting our message out and your message into us through a central point. Also last year, <clears throat> we had um, a review of the National Ambulance Service by HICWA, the Health Information and Quality Assurance Authority. They delivered a, a, a report, as you know, it was in the media, uh, in relation to the ambulance service. And one of the recommendations that's in that report, um, which we all fully agree with, is the integration with community first responder schemes in rural areas. Uh, and we're going to work very, very hard this year to make sure we can improve that. At the moment, um, we're also looking at the number of schemes we have and the way we can actually communicate to ensure we can do that in a positive way. And all the things I've just mentioned there will dovetail in together to make that a much more seamless way of operating. Uh, 
I suppose basically, I mean, why are we here today? Um, I'm, we're here today because the amount of people in the room here are sending the signal that there is a realisation in the country that I suppose the safest way to look after, whether it's your community or whether it's your next door neighbour or maybe one of your own family, is in, in the time of their need, which in particular is a, an echo call, and we'd call it an echo call, which everyone knows translates into a cardiac arrest in layman's language. You have to understand when people say to me that community first responders sometimes feel a little bit undervalued, they feel maybe a little bit to the fact that they're not being dispatched on a, on a, on a more regular basis. What you are being dispatched is a, a cardiac arrest. You can't get a sicker patient. That is the sickest patient you can possibly get. So the trust that we're putting in people, the trust that the community are putting in your hands to go out to the sickest patient you can possibly get is, is exemplary. The job that you do and appreciate it out there is exemplary too. And you should always feel very proud of what you do. Because in the true sense of the word, um, volunteers can mean certain things across certain agencies and certain disciplines, but you are actually volunteers. You're taking of your own time, your own expense, and your, your, your own complete family life and family way of doing things to look after your community, which in, in the day and age that we're in has to be applauded. And I congratulate you and, and keep going, please. Um, the way we're working at the moment is to an ambulance call, I mean, the, the 99 call that's received for an echo call, either in Ballyshannon or Tala, um, as you know, automatically now we're starting with treatment on the phone. So that's our first part of any chain. We're now tr giving uh, treatment for various types of, of injuries or, or medical conditions down the phone, uh, working with the pa the, whoever's there with the patient to maintain uh, CPR until an ambulance crew or a community first responder arrives at that house. That's the first point that's going to try and keep that patient alive. The second point is, is dispatching a community first responder scheme. Response times for community first responder schemes can be at from three to five to seven minutes. That's an extremely fast response time. If you take into account that after every minute or so, you approximately lose 10% of, of, of a chance to survival. So the minutes are extremely important. The local community know where they're going in, 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 at all times. So the, the chances of people not being aware of where they're going to is very slim. Hands-on is what we want. We need hands on the chest. We need people starting to do compressions, uh, and that's what works, and we all know that at this stage. Um, the integration with the ambulance crews that are arriving on the scene um, at this stage appears to be seamless. There's a recognition from our crews on a continuous basis about the good work you do, um, and uh, the ongoing work between us and on yourselves are going to improve that in a way. And again, we can only say thanks very much. Uh, we're also, I suppose, working this year with um, developing a strategy that David will talk to it later on, or a framework that, we, that we're starting to develop, which will give us a vision and a direction going forward for the next four to five years. Um, David will have a, a session on that in the afternoon. We're very enthusiastic about that. It will be a roadmap or a vision, whatever word you want to use, for us. It'll um, have us joined in, in a much more cohesive and, and, and strengthened fashion and it will give our commitment to yourselves and your commitment to us in, in, in a much more positive fashion. And we're going to welcome that and work very hard with it. Um, also, too, I suppose a couple of, I don't want to go into too many stats around like that, statistics, because I've looked through the, the programme for the day, and I have to say again, like last year, it flows extremely well. There's, uh, so it'll, it'll make, I suppose, as it runs through the day, the, the various workshops that are going on all linking together to give one message. And again, the basic message is hands on the chest as quick as we can possibly get it. That's what it amounts to. And anything we can do to assist in that, we will do it. Um, in November, say, of, of 2014, some stats that, that we're, we're collating at the moment, and they, they are not as robust as they could be due to the challenges with technical issues that we're talking about. But in, 20, in November 2014, we had on our systems linked to us 105 community first responder schemes around the country. Uh, we had 273 echo calls across the country in November, and 39% of those echo calls got a community first responder dispatch, which is, not, which is, which is applaudable considering where we're going from. In December, say, 2014, 20, uh, we had 106 schemes linked to our systems. We had uh, 267 cardiac arrests across the country in November, and we had a 45% response rate for community first responder schemes. So that's going up, as people would say to you, the trend is up. Uh, in January 2015, we have 111 community first responder schemes attached to our systems. We had 294 echo calls in January, and we had a 48% dispatch of community first responders to those. So again, the trend is going up. And the trend is going up because people are working together to ensure that the trend is going up. And what I'm saying here today is plain and simply is we will work 
tirelessly and relentlessly with yourselves in every fashion that we possibly can to expand the community first responder schemes or any first responder scheme of any type in a safe way that's patient focused and is focused on getting the patient the best treatment to the patient as quick as we possibly can. I'd also like to say that um, I suppose we've worked hard. There's a, a document out there called Health Matters. Uh, it's out there on our, our, our stand out there. And we've worked hard there over the last couple of months to get community first responder schemes uh, hi very much highlighted in it. I have it there with me. As you can see, the cover, spade, cover page is success. It's about uh, a, cardiac, a very successful cardiac output. The second and third page then talks about community first responder schemes in it. And it's our commitment to yourselves. So that's the commitment we have, and that's the level of commitment we're going to give to you. The last thing I'd like to say is that um, lately we're, we launched what we would call the One Life Project. Dr. Carl O'Donnell is going to give a, a talk on that in a few minutes. You are absolutely one of the most uh, central elements to that, with the exception of the patient, naturally enough. You're one of the most central elements to that of getting a response to the patient and getting every aspect of our chain and the chain of survival working to the best efficiency and effectiveness we possibly can. And Carl will talk to you about that. Um, Finally, because Dave is looking at me there now, um, finally, what I'd like to say is, genuinely, we would like to say, uh, express our thanks from the National Ambulance Service to yourselves. We'd like to do that in, in a genuine way because of the fact of the enthusiasm that you bring to what you're doing, the dedication that you bring to what you're doing, and also the fact that we actually know that it's working and we can prove that it's working. And so I said, I'd like to say thank you now for 2014, 2013, and back probably as far as 20, 2004 in some cases, if I can see John and Susan around. Um, and I'd like to thank you for going into 2015, because I know in 2015, with the work that we're doing, we're going to get an awful lot more. And you should be very proud of yourselves, and we are. So thank you very much, and have a very good day. Thanks a million.